Welcome to another episode of Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. Just a few years ago, the injustices in our world were brought to the forefront of our eyes by athletes across major sports. Well, no sport bigger than the NFL, which has been said to own one day of the week. I'm joined now by Commissioner of the NFL, Roger Goodell. How are you, my friend? I'm great, Emmanuel. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm Glad doing to be here. Great. Good to see you. Um, you're one of the busiest men in America. Uh, you could be anywhere, but you know the nature of these conversations and have chosen to be here. Why? Well, I've seen a few of your past episodes, and I, um, I'm a big believer in dialogue. And, and frankly, I talk to my kids all the time and others about you really don't learn until you're uncomfortable. <laughs> and, and really, when you get uncomfortable, it forces you to resort to something you're not comfortable with, mm -hmm. right? And it gives you an opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. So uh, I always look at things as an experience to learn. Um, I think I teased you. You're probably going to have a hard time making me uncomfortable, which is a challenge, and I probably shouldn't have said it, <laughs> because I'm very comfortable talking about race. Yeah. Um, I have all my life. You told me when we spoke on the phone, you said, Emmanuel, I remember in elementary school, kids were being bussed into my school. Take me back there. Elaborate on that. Well, I'm embarrassed to say I grew up in the 60s, so that's how <laughs> old I am, Emmanuel. So you can't relate to that one. But um, I went to public school mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C., right in the city. My dad was in politics, um, so we lived there from uh, 59, right after I was born, until 1970. But the 60s were a really volatile time. Yeah. You know, we had not only civil rights, but we had, um, you know, Vietnam War was a terribly divisive issue, too. And so being in Washington, I, you know, it wasn't unusual for me to walk home and the National Guard was on the, uh, on the street corner. Uh, and I really didn't think much about it. Again, I was doing my research and I came across this picture. Who, who, who are those two people in the center of that, that photo right there? <laughs> well, I can tell you all three of them. Okay. So this is Coretta Scott Key, Scott Scott Key. Key uh, George McGovern. Okay. And that is my father. And uh, what's going on there? They are marching um, in the uh, Vietnam War rally. Um, and the interesting story about that is uh, Coretta Scott King, she didn't want to march without my father. Please she, elaborate on that. She actually, um, this is how it was told to me, and as I understand it, um, she said, I want Charlie Goodell to walk with me because he stood up to the Vietnam War. Obviously, I look at that and I have a good, tremendous pride. We actually have that in our family house on the wall when you walk in. My dad actually, when he spoke up against the Vietnam War, you know, he originally supported the Vietnam War mm -hmm. as a politician. He changed his mind actually by going to various colleges around the state of New York, which he represented, and he listened to the kids. Yeah. And he listened to the students who were being drafted, by the way, mm -hmm. and going off to this tragic war. And so he was really influenced by that and said, he came back and he sat us all down as a family and said, I made a decision that I'm going to oppose the Vietnam War. It will not be popular with the president of the United States, Richard Nixon, and uh, and I will likely not win the, my reelection for the Senate, but it's the right thing to do. And so he turned out to be right on the fact he wouldn't win reelection because the president and the vice president just ripped him yeah. and just, you know, he, he didn't have a chance. And, you know, but he, he stood up for what he believes. It's not always easy to know what's right. But you have to, when you do know what's right, you have to have the courage to do it. What do you know now in 2020? What does Roger Goodell know now about the protest that took place during the national anthem, the peaceful protest that you wish you knew back then? Just what was going on in the communities. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know what was going on in the communities. Um, and when I had the chance to sit with our players, uh, I never had the chance to sit with Cap, but I saw, uh, talked with Kenny Stills a lot, yep. uh, Eric man. Reed, mm -hmm. uh, Malcolm Jenkson, Jenkins, uh, Anquan Bolden, uh, so many other players that, you know, some of them sacrificed a great deal. You can't understate how valuable the message that you put out a couple months was, at least as a former player, as a black man in society, that message, it resonated with me. It spoke to me. Um, you said you listened, you heard, you learned. Um, you even apologized to so many, but in, in the midst of all that, there wasn't a specific message or apology 
to the catalyst for it all, Kaepernick, who you, who you mentioned. If you were to publicly express your remorse, apologize to Kaepernick, what would you say? Well, I, the first thing I'd say is I wish we had listened earlier, uh, Cap, to what you were kneeling about and what you were trying to bring attention to. Uh, we had invited him in several times to have the conversation, to have the dialogue. Mm -hmm. I wish we had the benefit of that. Yeah. We never did. Um, and, you know, we would have benefited from that. Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes, because I've known for years now that the, the peaceful protest during the national anthem, it was never about the flag. To the point where I just want to rip out my hair sometimes and say it's not about the flag. Right. If you were to be able to relay that message, what would you say? Like, to people who still think it's about the flag, what would you tell them? It is not about the flag. The message here that it, what our players are doing is being mischaracterized. Mm -hmm. these, these are not people who are unpatriotic. Yeah. They're not disloyal. They're not against our military. Yeah. In fact, many of those guys were in the military. Yeah. And they were our military family. What they were trying to do is exercise their right to bring attention to something that needs to get fixed. And that, that, that misrepresentation of who they were and what they were doing was the thing that really gnawed at me. Our nation has gone through an incredibly uh, tumultuous, just to a degree, trying and depressing time for a lot of people, especially after seeing and witnessing the murder of George Floyd on camera. What was the most valuable lesson you learned about yourself um, in these last four or five months? specifically after witnessing that, along with so many other injustices? Well, you know, it was horrific to see that play out on the screen. Um, there was a part of me that said, I hope people realize that's what the players were, were, were protesting. And that's what's been going on in our communities. You see it now on television, but that's been going on for a long, long time. And that's where we should have listened sooner. Yeah. And we should have been in there with them, understanding it and figuring out what we can do as the NFL. We can't solve all problems, mm -hmm. Emmanuel, we can't. Yeah. But we're, we're big in our communities. We have a platform, we have an opportunity, and we're using that effectively now. I wish we could have been doing it earlier. What was the moment, because I've had my own, what was the moment when you realized, wait a second, that's why players are protesting? Was there a specific incident? Was there a specific tragedy where you, Roger Goodell, said, that's it, I, I get it now? Well, I would say this, when I listened to them, I heard it. And I'll, I'll try to make that distinction. I heard it and I believed it. Mm -hmm. But when you go and you sit in one of those bail hearings mm -hmm. or you go on the ride along and you see people who are mad, you go talk to a parent who's lost their child because of um, police brutality, it's better than hearing. You feel it you know it and you see it and that when that happens did it change it, you it's really powerful it, it helped me understand better and you know people can hear it but they're not connected to it I, I never experienced it i never experienced domestic violence in my life but when i when i went to call centers and i listened to victims and heard what they were saying and what they were going through and you can hear the fear in their voice yeah, it changes you. Yeah, you, you feel that deeply. There's nothing more peaceful than bowing one's head and taking a knee. We've seen other sports now do it. Um, will you support players if they were to peacefully protest during the national anthem this season?